Hey YouTube, so it's been a while since I've done an actual book review and I'm happy to come back and start doing those with one of my favorite book series by one of my favorite authors, Jay Wells. And the series is called Prospero's War and I just read num number three, it's called Deadly Spells. And basically the whole concept of the series is it's Breaking Bad except it's, it's magic instead of meth. There are these wizards that are drug dealers and they deal in potions that have basically negative effects and dirty magic and there are these cops that stop them and Kay Prospero the main character is part of this task force that deals with this sort of thing and the city of Babylon which is set in Ohio this whole world is incredible and I've, I've loved it since book one so obviously I've been excited to read book three and so it's often hard in both books and movie series to keep the series both fresh and interesting and to keep the characters relevant. So how does Jay do by book three? She is, she is excellent. This, this might even be my favorite of the series so far. I, I love the fact that we've built up Kate Prospero by three books already. So we kind of know what her deal is and it's not like she takes a back seat in this one. However, J. Wells is able to bring forward the, uh, the side characters, the people that she works with, you know, Mez, Morales, her partner, Danny uh, even becomes less, so, less, less of a kid in this book and he sort of becomes a, an adult and a more fleshed out character. We even learn more about the, the, the captain character, Gardner. I mean, she's been kind of a thorn in Kate Prospero's side for the most part in the first two books. She plays sort of the, the same role as Skinner does in the X-Files where it's just like, she's kind of just this stone-hearted dick and we flesh get her character more fleshed out in this one and that's what's so great is we learn there's more, uh, that there's more deeper meaning to why she is the way she is and how the antagonist of book three, who has the best name ever, uh, Pantera Sarazawa, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, named after one of the greatest metal bands of all time. So it's like every time this character is mentioned, I get a Pantera song stuck in my head. And who wouldn't want that? And also this character, this evil character has this ability to transform into a panther and that's another thing that I like about this book and along with book two is that it gets weirder as it's gotten weirder as the series has gone on they've ex has explored more areas of magic more physical aspects of magic and thinking a little more outside the box but not betraying what the original set up and like I said, my favorite thing about this book is that it it advances the side characters and I like that quite a bit because it makes them more than just uh, pieces or tools for Kate to use to get to the end of the story or to solve a case instead of being like, oh, well, this guy, his specialty is creating dirty magic and then the boss is sort of the source of contention and then the her her partner Morales is sort of the 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 serves the sexual tension and also the partner and best friend best friend vibe too but and it's not so much they were trapped so much in that in the first two but it's it it, it, it sticks them even further away from that in book three and that's why I liked it so much is we get to learn so much more about these characters without necessarily making the main character take sort of a back seat and I, I really love this one I, I think it's my favorite out of the three the last hundred pages had me on the edge of my seat and each one of them has been like that but I think this one more so than others because everybody is pretty much in it even uh, Valos who has who has proven to be uh, a good adversary uh, from Kate's past he even has a stake in the ending as well and it's like I I always I, I just always picture this guy as uh, this this great character of contention where 
she's where he's sort of he's the Lex Luthor to K. Prospero's Superman because he knows so much about her he knows how to get under her skin but yet at the same time there's a deeper meaning to it it's not that he's just evil he genuinely cares about Kate which gives a whole other layer and there's a whole there's a whole arc that he goes through during this book and it makes for interesting stuff in a political way almost without being like without beating the reader over the head with it and I liked that quite a bit. I thought that was that was smart and unexpected, and a good way to get under the main character's skin. J. Wells once again proves herself to be a force in the urban fantasy series. She's one of the best authors out there in my mind, and she she makes she makes the the genre so much more interesting in the way that she writes it and in the worlds that she builds. I would highly recommend. The Dirty Magic series to anybody because it's it's exciting, it's funny. There's a lot of funny stuff in these books, and it's it's just entertaining stuff without giving way to good character development. So, what's your favorite urban fantasy book or book series? Have you read any of the Dirty Magic books? or the Sabina Kane series, make sure you check her out online. I'll post all her links below. You can check her books out on Amazon and other bookstores. Jay is really, really, really talented. Uh, she's one of the writers that I look up to, and I, I got to sit down and talk to her over an audio interview a couple of years ago, and that was a big deal for me. You can check that out on my channel. As always, thanks for watching. Bye.